I'm not finished with these LED lights yet because, well, here's the PIR sensor off one and, and it's actually off the little 10 watt one that coincidentally um, somebody had uh, screwed up with the silicon and the silicon seal, which is kind of like, I don't know if they, I think they form it, I think they actually apply it into this and then form a mould over it to form ridges. But um, it was actually hanging over the side and the live crimp was jammed between the glass and the metal of the unearthed case. Nice. Good one, China. We love you too. So here's a passive infrared sensor off it. I recognise this as the exact same one as I've got outside uh, on one of my lights at the front of the house. And it's been very reliable, I have to say. So that's maybe something in its favour here. But let's um, take it to bits. Now, here's the thing. In some of the pictures on eBay, they show the lights with the sensor, with the little dials pointing up the way. And I think that's a possible risk for water getting in. I think that's the wrong way up. Certainly the one I've got already has it pointing down the way. And some of the other pictures uh, that you see of these lights on eBay have it pointing down the way. And um, the one one of the lights I got that has it, had it pointing up had it installed in such a way that you couldn't actually turn it. Uh, to actually point it the other way. You actually had to physically change its position in the case. So I wonder how many people are going to install it that way up. But anyway, let's open it without further ado. Two screws in the bottom. Ugh. And then it comes out, revealing that the little adjusters go into these standard skeleton potentiometers, and the adjusters themselves are actually quite loose. I don't think they're waterproof at all. So if you push it out, it's got a little silicon washer, but that it feels loose enough that that's not probably going to actually be making a, a sound um, waterproof seal in there. So that's interesting. That does really uh, suggest, there's no rubber seal in this either, so it does suggest that it should really point down the way, I think. Certainly the one I've got has been pointing down the way for a long time. Let's uh, empty this out and see what's inside. Here's the sensor board. Now, if it was pointing down the way, there's a little guard here uh, above the infrared sensor, and to me, that would shield it from possibly um, sunlight coming directly from above or the actual light it's mounted to, which is also suggests that that's the correct way up for it, I think. There's an LDR here. Um, I'll take this out. Uh, how do the wires go through here? Seems quite tight. Let's see what happens. I'll take this off. Ah, look at that. So, the wires go up through there. This has got indents on it, uh, and when you tighten it down, it's got a rubber seal, an O-ring here, that seals against the case. So once you've adjusted it, clicked it to the position you want, because it, it does have quite firm indents, uh, I guess once you tighten it up, it should seal it and make it fairly waterproof. What about the other axis? Oh, there's a rubber seal in here. I can feel the. I can actually see it shining, and uh, I can feel the sort of firm friction of that. Yeah, that's interesting. They've made an effort to make that waterproof. There are two circuit boards inside. This is the one with the sensor on it and a chip. The chip is an LP8072C. Ah, uh, that seems familiar. I think that's a standard chip for the passive infrared detectors. The other card is to do with power. There we go. So 
So we've got the brown is the live in, the blue is the neutral, and the red is the switched live back. So let's uh, actually, you know what, let's uh, scribble this down. Let's get a bit of card and scribble the, at least the power supply side of it down. So... First thing I'm noticing here is that the, um, the bridge rectifier has two ordinary diodes and it's got two what look like Zener diodes. In fact, that one underneath is marked 24 volt. That's an odd arrangement. Okay, let's uh, scribble this down. So, let's start with live. And we'll put neutral down there as well. So live is going straight to this bizarre Zener diode bridge. Live is also going into a contact on the relay. Right. Okay, so I'm going to have to draw this as a, an actual bridge rectifier, I think. Um, neutral is going through a 100 ohm resistor. 100 ohm. Um, and through capacitor with a discharge resistor, so the capacitor is rated 560 nano. 560 nano. And the discharge resistor is quite generous, it's 2.2 meg ohm. So, discharge resistor, 2.2 meg ohm. And from there, it goes to the other side of the bridge. Oh, this is actually, I should have made this a wee bit more spaced better, but not to worry. So everything's going to be overlapping a wee bit. This happens when you're just doodling stuff down. So the Zener diodes are giving me some mental complications here. Zener diodes in a bridge wrecked far. So both the diodes pointing to the positive, according to this capacitor here, are just ordinary diodes, one amp diodes. The Zeners are going to the negative and there I really have uh, screwed up in uh, spacing here. So how on earth does that work? So that's the negative and that's the positive. And uh, there's a capacitor across here. 100 microfarad, 35 volts. So, Okay, let me just get my head around this. Not really familiar with Zener as being used in... Um, so, if they're 24 volt... If they're 24 volt, let me think... Um, if you've got... The supply is current limited by this, then you've got two back-to-back -back Zeners. And when you've got two back-to-back -back Zeners like that, they will clamp the voltage at the Zener voltage plus about they'll at about 0.6 volts. So while that side's positive, uh, it will generate, it will pull the, it will limit the, it will drag the capacitor limited supply down. It's basically a bi-directional Zener then. So that means, oh, so uh, technically speaking, 
it will just, uh, because this is current limited, it will just drop 24 volts across these two zeners. See, normally I would have thought it would go through a, a bridge rectifier like that, and then they'd put a zener across the output to do that. But um, uh, I suppose really, if it's a, a, that'll help reduce the dissipation as well, and it means there, it's one component less. I thought zeners would be more expensive than ordinary diodes, though. Okay, but anyway, we have our um, 24 volt supply now. I can power it up and test that actually. Um, and that is usually used to actually switch the relay to, because it's more efficient uh, switching the relay at 24 volts, because the higher the voltage, the lower the current it requires, and that means it can stay with a smaller capacitor. So, the relay... Um, Let's, uh, so we've got our 24 volt, and we've got zero volts. Um, let's get rid of this. There's uh, another couple of components here. Let's get rid of them first. So there's a 1.5k resistor, a zener, and... Another little capacitor, which it just says 16 volts, and is that, I'm not sure if that's a, I'm not sure the value of that is. As luck would have it, it's, com it's facing in towards the other capacitor. Oh well. So we've got 24 volts coming down through a resistor, 1K5. It's uh, got a zener, whatever voltage that is, and then shares the common negative. Oh, right, I get it. I get it. So that is basically creating a regulated supply for the logic, because it, it then goes to the um, logic, well, the sensor. There are three wires here. One of them is ground. One of them is that positive rail. And the other one comes back to this transistor. So, going along here with the 24 volt rail, uh, that's going, that's the positive to the logic, this is the negative to the logic, um, and we've got a signal coming back from the logic that is going straight to uh, S. 9013. Oh, that's just a generic uh, NPN transistor. So that's an S9013. Uh, so that's going to be just a standard NPN transistor, which is switching to negative. And it's got the coil of the relay across it to the 24 volt supply. Um, and it's also got that little diode there. And the reason for the diode is when um, the coil turns off, when the transistor turns off, um, it, it prevents the reverse spike from the coil from damaging the transistor. Okay, so that's the signal back in from the passive infrared. Let's just check those voltages. Let's power it up and stick a meter on it. This will be mains voltage, I wouldn't really recommend doing things like this. I'll also be keeping an eye on this red wire, because uh, it's going to be effectively live if the relay is energised. Uh, meter. Uh, test lead.
and I shall plug this in. That's it now powered and I just heard it click and I heard the relay drop out again. Oh, and come on again. That's detecting me moving about probably. So I'm looking for... That's going to be the positive of the... This is going to be a negative connection. This is going to be positive. So I'm looking for about... I'm just keeping an eye on this live wire here. I'm looking for about 24 volts here. 22 volts, that's good enough. And what am I getting once it's been limited to the other one? 5 volt. It's a 5 volt supply going out to that. So um, I'll just disconnect that. Um, so that's 5 volts, which makes sense because that's what the, that actual, um, the standard chip is most likely to operate at. So I'll just disconnect that again. Ooh, not the easiest things to unclip. Chuck my lead back down. Right, so uh, there are a couple other components here. There's a 100 ohm resistor going from the output contact. So that's live. There's going to be a load as well. And the load will be switched to the live via a contact. And that contact is being uh, driven by the relay coil over here. Um, and that looks like a little snubber network. 22 nano, 100 ohm. Yes, so that'll probably be across the... That'll be across the switch contact, a little snubber network. Nope, I've screwed up. It's to neutral? It's from the output switch. So let's say I get rid of that. It's from the output switch. That's odd. So it's actually across the load. I'd normally have expected that to be across the contact. Huh, okay, that's very odd that they've done it that way. Mm, must have a reason for it. And that's more or less it. So the chip is the, uh, it's the LP80720. C and I bet I've got the data sheet for that knocking about somewhere. One moment. I think that's the same one that's used in a lot of the little, well, it's used in a lot of the little uh, sensor uh, devices for switching modes. I do have the data sheet. And in fact, the bottom uh, schematic here is pretty much what we've got here. Ah, look, they've actually got the snubber network across the relay contact, like I thought it was. So they've actually got that wrong in this one. They've actually put the snubber network, instead of putting it across the relay contact, they've put it up across the load. That's odd. But yeah... I won't go into this in too much detail. You can download this data sheet online if you do a search on Google for LP8072C. But, you know, other than that, it actually looks okay. It doesn't look too bad at all. Yes. So, yep, that was quite enjoyable. Yeah.